It is the third Saturday in October, and the show is on one more time in Knoxville, Tennessee. One of the premier games in college football about to be played. Nearly 100,000 faithful will huddle today in East Tennessee to shout Roll Tide to the deepest regions of the Smokies and dance to Rocky Top until there is no energy left. Sports College Football presents a CFA matchup from the SEC, Alabama and Tennessee. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to that wonderful old third Saturday in October in eastern Tennessee. It's always fun to come back. They've been doing this for 75 years. And 33 times, Alabama has come into this ball game undefeated. And 13 times have gone home. Whoop. Well, here they come one more time. Undefeated. Ranked number four in the nation at 6-0. and oh, And leading the Eastern Division of the Southeastern Conference with their unblemished record. Tennessee, ranked number 13, lost last week to Arkansas. They're tied with Georgia in the Eastern Division. And these division winners will meet December 5 for the Southeastern Conference Championship. And Bob Greasy, like an old friend of mine, once said, this defensive bunch from Alabama plays like it's a sin to let somebody <laughs> score a point. Alabama comes primed with defense. Well, if you like defense, this is the right place to be this Saturday afternoon. Both defenses are outstanding. Tennessee comes in the seventh-rated defense against the uh, scoring defense in the country. Alabama, the number one scoring defense in the country. The Alabama defense has been dominant, and the same recipe applies. Speed and quickness. They are led by two outstanding defensive players, defensive ends Eric Curry and John Copeland. In six games, Alabama has allowed only three times touchdowns and as yet has not allowed an opponent to score in the first half. Tennessee on the other hand has been a surprise. They lost 18 uh, seniors to graduation last year and yet they won their first five ball games. They lost last week to Arkansas. But they uh, are a big surprise. They are led by an outstanding sophomore Heath Schuler. Schuler is second in the SEC in passing. He is second in the SEC in rushing touchdowns. Yes, he can run and run very well. The key for this ball game, the offenses like to run the football. The defenses are going to try and shut that down, and the quarterbacks are going to have to try and produce. The uh, schedule for Alabama gets tougher from here on. Tennessee's hard schedule is just about done. Well, Tennessee has already beaten Georgia and Athens and Florida. Alabama uh, has not played a team with a winning record. I think combined their opponents have been like 12 and 22. Well, Alabama cornerback Antonio Langham said earlier this week, don't worry, we own Tennessee. We have won six in a row. No Tennessee senior has ever beaten Alabama. Well, obviously that made the bulletin board in the Tennessee clubhouse. And one wonders if that might be letting your mouth overload your rump. Here comes the tide into the stadium. On the other side, the volunteers have come into the stadium, and down in the middle of the melee is Jackaroot. And Keith, this may be the loudest stadium, if not in the South, it certainly could be in the entire country. When you assemble 100,000 fans, it gets very loud. And if you're an opposing team coming here to play here, you have to be concerned about the noise, especially on offense. So what Gene Stallings and the Alabama Crimson Tide have done all week is they've gone indoors, not because of the weather in Tuscaloosa, but because they could run recordings of Rocky Top and crowd noise right up beyond almost the pain threshold. He said, you don't want to try and invoke the noise rule. You want your players to get used to it. They'll use hand signals, but it still could play a critical factor, especially when you're down close to the goal line. Keith? All right, Jack, the weather today is just glorious. True feeling of autumn, as you see, 60 degree temperature, low humidity, and uh, just a little sprinkling of clouds here and there. It's been a great 10 days for the leaf lookers in the Blue Ridge Mountains and the Smokies, and there's more to come. And uh, the Tennessee Navy is in place, and that man is right. It ain't Bama country. This country belongs to orange and white. And Gene Stallings, as he comes into the stadium, knows full well that he comes in with an undefeated team to play a team that was upset last week and a team that is primed now to do something about it. 
Johnny Majors, who has come off uh, uh, by five bypass heart surgery to return to the coaching sidelines. Seemed in good spirits yesterday, I thought, when we visited with him. In fact, he seemed almost optimistic. Tennessee won the toss. They elect to take the ball to start the second half, so it'll belong to Alabama in the first offensive possession today. The officials for today's game, led by William Goss, and historically, the officials have a busy time when Alabama and Tennessee play because they play this game with almost uncapped enthusiasm. Kind of interesting, uh, Bob Greasy, that David Palmer, number two, is the man in the middle of the field standing in the sunshine to accept the opening kickoff. He missed three ball games uh, this year earlier with the suspension. And Palmer last year, as you take a look at the kickoff man, Joey Chapman, Palmer last year ran four kicks back for touchdown as a true freshman. come close to a record as the ball goes up into the air they didn't particularly want to kick it to Palmer but he got it anyway as he came up to accept it and was probably no more than two steps from breaking it and going for six points that's how dangerous he is the ball is put down on the 37 yard line where it's first down and coming out for the tie Jay Barker he's number seven six three two oh nine sophomore from Trustville Alabama Derek Lassick is behind him. He's become an outstanding running back and is, is the leading running back on the team. And he's got the ball. He's out of Haverstraw, New York. He comes around the corner, crosses the 40, goes to the 45. That's an eight-yard pickup. Up front, Alabama shows us Hammond, Wilson, Shields, Stevenson, and Patterson. They're big people, and one of the interesting matchups of the day will involve Steve Buskey, a 6'6", tight end for Alabama, and the strong safety for Tennessee, McCluskey, who stands a mere 5'8". From the 45, it is second down and two for Alabama. Pitch it back to Lassick, finds a hole on the right side of the line and cruises on through for the first down at the Tennessee 49-yard line. So in that very first series, Alabama makes, makes it look pretty easy along the trenches. And Alabama comes out running the football, which they like to do. They came into the ball game averaging 230 yards on the ground each game. That's the way Gene Stallings likes to have his offense run. Says he's a little bit boring, a little bit conservative, but that's the way I run my, my team. Houston is the fullback, but he's up in the slot right now. They turn and give it to Lassick again. He turns to make his cut and loses his footing and then is taken down very sharply after a one-yard pickup. The turf on the field, the Shield Watkins Field here at Neyland Stadium on the campus of the University of Tennessee is, is an aged field. It's not good. It's, it's just not very good. Flat out not good. It's been down for several years. The weather has worn it. They're going to replace it after next year, and hopefully they'll put Mother Earth back down. David Palmer checks into the lineup now for Alabama. Ball given to Lassick, getting outside, and caught from behind. Good play by J.J. McCleskey. Now, that's why he's in the ball game. He's 5'8", 170 pounds. He's out of Knoxville. But Johnny Major says he's on the field because he makes things happen. He is always around where the action is. He is an outstanding young man. He was a walk-on four years ago as a freshman. But if he has to match up with that 6'6 Alabama tight end this afternoon... He may just climb up. And <laughs> Ten inches he's given away. It is third down. Barker lets it go, and he's got his man. He's got a first down as Wimbley, Prince Wimbley, delayed on the sideline. And now there's a flag on the far side. Let's see about it. I think somebody had the Wimbley by the shirt tail. So that's where the flag was thrown. Here's Bill Goff. I think it's soft sides on uh, Tennessee. Looked like they may have jumped a little early, unless they were drawn off. Offsides Offside. on the defense. And eligible receivers downfield on the offense. Penalties offset. We play the down. Do it again. 
Umpire is A.C. Lambert, Jr., Tim Abel, the linesman. Line judge is Jim Bing, Sr., side judge Tom McElroy, Joe Delaney, the field judge, Stan Murray, the back judge. But what happened there, Keith, that was not supposed to be a pass. The lineman went downfield, and when Barker, Barker saw they were off sides, he just decided to throw the ball. Well, the lineman saw it was going to be a quarterback draw. They ran the play. Barker improvised and just threw it because he knew he had Tennessee off sides. Kevin Lee is very wide at the bottom of the picture on third down. This is the pass. Foiled as Barker is hit hard from the backside by Shane Bonham, number 92 for the Volunteers. But again, you've got a penalty flag. Going against Alabama. They'll decline it and force the punt. Little twist. Two linemen go inside. Now, Bonham from the left side, right there, number 92. He had three sacks last week against Arkansas, a very active front. They're second in the SEC in quarterback sacks. Gets Brian Deal into the ball game to punt for Alabama. A sophomore from Oakland and Sean Summers, a freshman from Oak Ridge, Tennessee, back to receive it. Good kick. High hanger, tail dragger, bounces toward the end zone, goes into the end zone. That'll come out to the 20. Alabama had it down there on the one-yard line, but number 22, Willie Gaston, couldn't control his momentum, and the ball will come out to the 20 after a 44-yard punt. Well, that was a good punt. Gaston just misplayed it. They work on this all the time. Here's Heath Schuler. City, North Carolina, 208-pound sophomore, exciting play. Tennessee's first offensive possession, sets up to throw the ball, bounces outside, taken down by the pursuit, number 56, Derek Oden, who stayed home and would not let him improvise. Oden, a six-foot senior from Tuscaloosa. In case you don't know where Bryson City, North Carolina is, it's just over the mountain. And the United States government still owes them a road from 1943. <laughs> they do. I know they do. Gain of a yard on the play. It's second down and nine. <laughs> it just didn't take long to get that in. Schuler <laughs> <laughs> rolls it out, buys a little time, whips his pass low, intended for Kendrick Jones out of Collierville, Tennessee. And it touched the turf about the time it got to his hand. Well, and that is a big upset for South Carolina jumping on Mississippi State. How about North Carolina beating Virginia? Well, that's another one. Interesting that Shula, Shuler and the uh, volunteers come out throwing the football. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, where do you start? Uh, Alabama is tough in every area. Now it's a third down and ten. Backside pressure comes, gets the ball away to Dwayne Freeman. Freeman, however, again cannot outrun the pursuit. You've got the same old problem here today that we've seen the last two weeks with Miami. When you send your receivers out and discover the other folks with linebackers can catch them. Well, that was a wide receiver screen. It was well designed and well set up. The timing was just a shade off, and with the speed of Alabama, they got there to make the play. Palmer goes back to accept the punt from Tom Hatton. Kick, forcing Palmer into a fair catch and up at the 36 yard line that's considered good field position and Hutton gets a 36 yarder out of it seems like Tennessee always has a punter that can knock that ball up around the moonbeam mm -hmm. maybe it goes back to the history of coach George Cathago when he did it here and then coached so many over the years that he worked here Second possession now for the Crimson Tide. Lassick and Houston. Lassick the single back right now behind Barker. Lassick has it to the 40-yard line. That'll be a pickup of about four yards. 
Penn State and Boston College, but BC's owned that ball game up to the fourth quarter. Now BC is making a game of it at 35-32. There's got to be too much pride, too deeply planted in the soul of Penn State football to get beat too badly. So Boston and Boston College has never beaten them at the State College. Alabama. Didn't have what they wanted with the circumstances. Barker not wanting to take a chance, take a risk. Timeout. The timeout called at 10 minutes and 11 seconds to play in the first quarter. Gene Stallings there talking to his um, young quarterback. Barker is a sophomore quarterback. Started at the end of last year. Started four ball games and really uh, has not lost a game since he has taken over for the Crimson Tide. Jackaroot. Keith, you were talking earlier on about the old turf here in the stadium, and they said they're going to replace it. Well, the Alabama Crimson Tide, can you believe this? They brought 500 pairs, different pairs of shoes, different types of shoes. The concern was for each individual team player to determine yesterday during walkthrough which they felt would best suit this turf. On top of those 500 pairs, they have locked in the truck in case it rained today, and a complete another set of shoes that they call their rain tires. Old Tank Cartley had to rent an extra truck, didn't he? Get all that stuff up here. <laughs> For sure, but you've got to have good footwear. You're not going anywhere if you've got good footwear. Parker goes long, down the middle, incomplete. Trying to buy the big one deep to Kevin Lee. Number 37, the junior out of Mobile, and he couldn't get to it. He had double coverage, but he had a half a step on the double coverage. So they stretch him vertically a little bit. Send a message. Good point. Send a message early. Uh, Alabama is only throwing for 163 yards per game. But uh, Barker is, uh, has a strong arm, and that'll help later in the ballgame. Third down, a little more than five. That's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Number 90 fetched it out of the air. Big Ben Talley, 6-3. Reached up and slapped it away. He's from Griffin, Georgia. And it'll bring up another punt for the tie. Well, what you got? Tennessee likes to blitz. Here are their three linebackers. Take a look as they rush the passer. Four linemen coming. Three more linebackers. And the linebacker right there jumps and just gets a piece of the ball. Deal gets it out, gets it to turnover. That's a beaut. Going for the corner. What a kick. Oh, holy cow. He knocked that thing out at the one-yard line. It's a 58-yard putt out of bounds at the one. And to add insult to injury, you got to start against the number one defense in the country from your own one-yard line, huh? Mm. Wallace Wade would have loved it. Any coach is going to like a guy that can do that for him. That's the longest punt of his career. Now, Tennessee offensively, you just don't want to make any mistakes. This is a very aggressive, very quick defense. You don't want to give up two points back here in your own end zone. Charlie Garner and Mario Gunson line up behind Schuler and Schuler. Tries to wedge it out for a couple of yards. And Schuler, as we told you, is a big guy. He's 6'3", 208. He is not timid. He will stick his head in there. Charlie Garner is a junior out of Falls Church, Virginia. Junior college transfer. And he offers a little bit more speed, which is why he is in there at the tailback spot. Mose Phillips, number 19, comes into the backfield, replacing Brunson for Tennessee on second down and eight. The checkerboard end zone. Schuler faking. Going to throw it out of the end zone. Gets it upfield. Got a man wide open. Out of bounds. Incomplete. Oh, my goodness. Kendrick Jones was lonesome. He could have caught cold and Grandma bought him a blanket before anybody got to him. And the ball was too late to get there. The problem, Keith, is the timing in. The play was well designed. The timing wasn't there. The safety got over to make the play. Schuler had to throw it out of bounds. So it is third down. Schuler looking to the sideline to get a play for this third down situation. It looks like they may be going to punt. Yeah, they're going to punt the ball on third down backed up. 
They got Alabama with the, the different people on the field, but Tennessee is not able to get them out there quick enough. David Palmer comes running onto the field. Button's kick is out of there, and it's not very good. Not very long. It's effective enough in that it is so high. Palmer, who got on the field at the last second, has no chance to return it. And so Tennessee gives the ball back to Alabama, but because of that 58-yarder out of bounds at the one and the tied defense, all of a sudden, here's Tennessee camped on the Alabama side of the field at the tied 47. That was a 44-yard punt. Well, we've had four possessions. Each team has had the two, two times offensively, and it's been all defense and kicking. Field position. Well, that's the nature of these two coaches. That's the history of these two teams. This is a lesson, and that's called a lick as he is taken down. And now for the first time today, let's hear from John Saunders. Thank you, John. This is Lassick again. Big gain there. That's the first down. The gain is inside the 33-yard line of Tennessee. Lassick, hard, tough runner. Not that big at 190 pounds, but he's at a low center of gravity. Good balance. Derek Lassick, a big game last week, gained 188 yards. Two 100-yard uh, two games back-to-back -back for him coming into this ball game. He's got 38 here in the first quarter. Picks back to him again. Big hole on the right side. And another first down for Alabama. This will be down around the 22-yard line. So Lassick dug in his heels when the opportunity came along and Derek Palmer got into some social trouble. Uh, Lassick got his chance to be the man in that running back position, and he took the bit. Boy, he hadn't turned it loose yet. So good Anderson. blocking. Good blocking up front, too, Keith. Chris Anderson checks in now to give Lassick a breather. Yeah, that doesn't work. Anderson, the junior, out of Huntsville. Give him a yard brought down by George Kidd. George is a freshman from Milan, Tennessee. In there at linebacker with middleman Reggie Ingram, a junior from Memphis. And Ben Talley from Griffin, Georgia, is the other linebacker. Keith, that Tennessee defense has just been rebuilt this year. They lost 10 starters off of that team from last year. And being coached this year by Larry Marnie. And he missed spring practice. He came in late. Your guns and your fight reverse. Still got it. Out of bounds. Just short of the goal line. Call it the five. Tally shoves him out. To toss to our left side. He's going to fake the reverse, which slows up the pursuit just a little bit. Nice containment by Wilson there. He just gets up inside those Lassick and gets down inside the five-yard line. Good block uh, on Steve Session, number nine, to take him out of the play. Alabama does pretty well inside the 20. They've scored 21 of 25 times. Classic on first and goal to the one. Time remaining first quarter, six minutes and 40 seconds. The last four plays, very basic stuff. It's called blocking. Running, blocking, and tackling. Very basic. Gene Stallings wouldn't have it any other way. It's kind of like the old line about the quarterback. You can't complete passes flat of his back. The linebackers can't make tackles flat of their back either. They'll stop this one. No play. Here's a marker on the play. foul, false start, and the offensive line. So Alabama. That's a big penalty right under there. The huge noise factor that Jack talked about. Couldn't hear probably. This is Couldn't a hold himself. Uh, well, this is a problem. It's been a problem. The top of your screen. Watch the red helmet right there. He moves. Alabama's had a lot of penalties this year. So here's the first chance to score for the Crimson Tide. Derek down to the one yard line and for those of you who have been watching the Penn State Boston College game 
waiting to hear the final score. You saw that a moment ago, 35-32. And uh, Keith, that was a big penalty for Alabama down on the one-yard line. Anytime you move going in, it's a big, big uh, subtraction when you move back five yards on the one-yard line. Classic touchdown. So Alabama off the exchange of punts. That's what set this whole thing in motion. As they get the shot, stick it in the end zone. Well, George Wilson, number 68, left guard, is going to pull around. Now watch the safety right here. He's going to get a nice piece of him. But he flips himself around and into the end zone. And Lasik in that possession, seven carries, 50 yards, and the touchdown. And Proctor is in for the extra point. He's got it. That's good. So the touchdown comes at five minutes and 16 seconds to go in the first quarter. Those of you who have seen the finish of that exciting Boston College Penn State ball game got here just in time to hear the happy sounds of Alabama as the Crimson Tide has moved to the first score of the ball game to lead it seven to nothing. This was a big play in this possession of a 44 yard drive as they fake a reverse. Lassick gets loose on the sideline and gives them a first down down at the five yard line. And uh, then Lassick eventually would stick it in the end zone. And this first quarter so far has belonged to Alabama. Here's the score with Lassick number 25 taking it over. And the whole thing was set up on a 58 yard punt by Alabama out of bounds at the one. Tennessee answered with a 44 yard punt out of the end zone. But Tied offense, which has been coming on the last three weeks. Took it down and stuck it in for six. Now Proctor kicks it off at the low liner. Bouncing around on the five, and here comes Ronald Davis with it for Tennessee. Still looking around for some daylight, and finally will be thrown out of bounds just short of the 22-yard line. Knock it down, which first and ten, Tennessee. As a look at this drive, eight plays, 46 yards. Lassick took it in. Now look at Lassick gained 50 yards on that drive. The reason he gained 50 yards and it only went 46 is because of the five-yard penalty on the one-yard line moved it back. So Lassick doing it all on that drive. Pete Schuler sets up at quarterback. With two wide men at the top, will run the football. Number 30, Charlie Garner, trying to find some daylight. And there has been no daylight along the Alabama defensive front so far in this ball game. Tennessee came out trying to throw the ball, but he just don't have time. Number 80 is Eric Curry. He is 6'7", gets to the outside, gets a piece of the tackle, forcing the containment, making the runner go back inside. It'll be second down and nine. Ball is handed away, and for the first time today, there's daylight for Charlie Garner as feature. Garner cuts it back inside, and he is finally down at the Alabama 32-yard line, and it's the first time all day the volunteer faithful have had a chance to holler. Watch the two offensive linemen on this side. They're going to pull and block as the runner is going to get through here. Good blocking from the right side. That's Smith and Gordon. Beautiful. That's misdirection. Little counter. Got the linebackers out of the way. London 55 and just makes the most of it when he gets downfield. We'll call it the 33. The tail end of the ball touching the 33-yard hash mark. And Garner showing some nifty moves. Dances inside the 25 before Lemansky Hall can bring him down. And suddenly, Tennessee is knocking on the door. Garner comes out. Looks like he might have hurt his hand. 
for his arm. Moe's Phillips, the single back for the Volunteers. Schuler keeps it. Look, he had number four downfield, uh, number four being Craig Faulkner, but he couldn't set himself. He didn't have control of the ball, and uh, by that time, he'd run out of time as John Copeland ate him up. You'll hear Copeland a lot today. You'll hear Curry a lot today. And while they get busy with bigger people, you'll hear London and Hall mopping up behind them. They've been doing it all season. Aaron Hayden is the single back now for Tennessee, number 24, the sophomore out of Detroit. It's third down and two. There's no first down there. Curry, Eric Curry, the senior from Thomasville, Georgia. That's one from Thomasville that Bobby Bowden didn't get. That's for sure. Not making a first down against Alabama in the first quarter of games this year is not uncommon. In fact, of the seven opponents that have played Alabama now, only one team has converted on third down in the first quarter all year. John Bexford is in for the place kick for Tennessee. And as you saw, he's perfect on the season. Eight of eight. This is a 42-yard try. Trying to get the volunteers on the board. He missed it. That's his first miss of the year from 42 yards. And so at 155 to play in the first quarter, Alabama 7 and Tennessee nothing. to the attack from the 25-yard line. The starting unit early in the ball game uh, that started this game, the diehard starting lineup. You had Jay Barker at quarterback, but the big news for them has been uh, uh, Derek Lassick. Lassick now is out of the ball game with Chris Anderson, 33, in replacing him, and uh, he is, for the second time in this ball game, really stuck. Jay Barker, 10-0 and 0 as a starter, and... Uh, that streak goes back to last year. You have Derek Lassick, we told you about him. Kevin Lee has stepped up to one of their primary receivers, and we've yet to see anything, any attention at all being given to their big tight end, Steve Buskey. The people along the front will give you in a moment. As the tide comes up now, second down and 10. That's David Palmer in motion. He's got the ball. Cuts it right back into the middle of the field. Look out. All the way down to the Tennessee. 44 yard line. First down for Alabama. Let's give you the big people up front in the diehard starting lineup. You got Hammond, Wilson, Shields, Stevenson, and Patterson. That's 270, 269, 260, 280, and 295. Not as big as you have seen in some uh, lineups around the country, but it's very agile. And it does the kind of a job you just saw. That's a 30-yard run. Heard on the play is Roosevelt Patterson. The tackle for the tie. Joey Harville will come in replacing him. Harville is a 283-pound sophomore. So here's Alabama on the Tennessee side of the field again. Call it the 45. Give it to Palmer coming the other way. He's going to give it away to Kevin Lee. Lee on the reverse gets a block on the corner and goes inside the 25 to the 21. Well, those two plays were sister plays. The last two that you saw, Palmer taking the first play and running with, with back into the backfield. This time, the same type of thing on a reverse. The defense for Tennessee, which is beleaguered at the moment, Todd Kelly, incidentally, along that front, is second only now in career sacks of a quarterback to Reggie White. Lassick is back in, a little delay. He's got the ball. And he's going to pick up close to five yards on the carry. Time ticking down into the quarter. Reggie Ingram, 41, middle linebacker. Blocked by uh, Shields. 
Blocked very well by Shields. Makes the tackle about five yards downfield. In the first quarter of play, Alabama's run for 133 yards. Pass for none. Lead seven to nothing. DC brought to you by Pontiac and your nearby Pontiac dealers. We are driving excitement. By Payne Weber, we believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. We'll give you the others in a moment as Derek Lassick trying to change direction slips and slides down. By the Die Hard Battery, now with more power when you need it most. And by two-day priority mail service from your post office. Seven to nothing, Alabama leads Tennessee as we start the second quarter of play. We are in Knoxville on the campus of the University of Tennessee at Neyland Stadium. The ball is at the 18-yard line, where it is third down and seven. Possession of Alabama on the Tennessee side of the field. Little delay, given a Lassick, looking for daylight. Caught and walked down after picking up about three yards. Shane Bonham, number 92, the young man from Fairbanks, Alaska, was there to make the tackle. Third and seven, good field position. A, certainly a conservative call, but Alabama plays that way. They've got a strong defense. They don't want to take any chances with their young quarterback. They want to give this man right here a chance to kick a field goal to put him up by 10. Well, Michael Proctor was considered the best high school kicker in the country when he came over to Alabama. This is a 33-yarder. It's right down the highway. Good. Ten to nothing. The tide goes to the lead over Tennessee. The numbers there on the scoring effort with Proctor getting ready to kick off. He's only a freshman out of Pelham, Alabama. 5'11", 175. The man who will go deep for Tennessee is Ronald Davis, a sophomore from Bartlett. to go in the first half of play. We're in the second quarter now. And it's 10 to nothing, Alabama leading. High hanger. Davis at the five. Number 39 was the man that held his position and kept him from turning the corner. His name is Eric Turner. He's a strong safety, and here are your numbers for the first period of play. First quarter uh, jumps out at you right here. Only one first down for Tennessee, and no yards passing for Alabama. Alabama had 20 plays. Tennessee only had 10. Of course, they had four possessions to Tennessee's three possessions. Tennessee has it first down at their 36. Here, most of you know that Paul Horning won the Heisman Trophy in 1956. Paul, of course, Notre Dame. Did you know that Johnny Majors was the runner-up? Did you also know they're still unhappy about it down in Tennessee? That pass Schuler intended for Faulkner is uh, incomplete off his hand. Ball was thrown with finger-burning rotation. The diehard starting lineup for Tennessee. They opened the game this way, and uh, we've told you about Schuler somewhat. Eight running touchdowns and five passing touchdowns. He's a very versatile fellow. A lot of young people in that group right there for them, particularly in the running back four. Second down, 10. Tennessee's had only one offensive surge so far in the game. That was based on a run by Charlie Garner. That play doesn't get much out of it. The offensive front for the Volunteers. And we'll read you from Stowell through uh, Gordon. We'll give you the weights as you see. They also have a 300-pounder. Everywhere you turn these days is one of those big dudes that weighs 300 pounds or more. And the things that makes them so hard to handle is they don't have to keep their arms in anymore. They're out there shoving around. They're like trying to run around a corn crib. Third down and eight. Truett. Oh, oh. Threw a bullet that Corey Fleming had no chance of catching. No chance. The Alabama defense, Copeland and Curry, James Gregory is the man that stepped into the middle to play so very well. All in London on the outside are just absolute terrors. In the secondary, Antonio Langham, four interceptions. That's a very good secondary. 
The speed of this Alabama defense is certainly comparable, I think, to Miami's. Here's the punt by Chapman. Palmer. He does tend to make you hold your breath a little bit. He's out near the 33-yard line, and there Alabama is going to possess the ball, leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Smokey Seven, the Blue Tick Hound, Tennessee mascot. Among the crowd of 97,388, that is the second largest Neyland Stadium crowd ever. The biggest was against Auburn last year, 97,731. 97,388 today. Alabama's ball, first down, call it the 34. Parker, down the middle with it, number 83, Buskey, the tight end was open and couldn't come up with it now let's check in with john saunders to nothing though they've been running pretty well with it the defense has shut down tennessee pretty much here's a little short pitch to lassick shoot with a play there they had palmer going in motion and he came back as if he was going to give it to palmer instead gave it to the short man and the play works pretty well close to a first down and you got a tennessee man shaken up on the play That'll be Ingram, the middle linebacker, Reggie, a junior out of Memphis. So you got time out for him. Ingram had knee surgery back in the spring and did an outstanding job of re, uh, recuperating and recovering to play. I don't know if it's at knee or not, but uh, they do not have a lot of depth at the in inside linebacker spot. Uh, the backup to him is a true freshman. Hope he's not uh, hurt so seriously. Monday night, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football Central Division of the AFC. Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Young David Shula, Mr. Cower, are going to get together and see who can pull the trick of the... I guess Boomer Esiason is not going to be able to go. At least you know, the reports we have is he's still tender. Kind of iffy, huh? That's like playing your uh, your neighbor when you the two uh, those two in the same division have getting together for a long time. That's like this one here, the McCoys and the uh, what do you call them, the Hatfields. <laughs> yes, sir. This is the wrong part of the country for you to forget that name. Neighbors playing, but I'm not from this part of the country. Yeah, but they live just down the road. <laughs> okay. The one you go be traveling. <laughs> Lassick <laughs> turns it to midfield. <laughs> and McCluskey makes the tackle on him. JJ, number six, 5'8", 170 pounds of dynamite. The mention, he was a walk-on a couple of years ago. The local kid from Knoxville was a defensive back as a freshman. Then he moved him to, a, a, as a wide receiver in his junior year. He caught 35 passes last year. Now he's back at strong safety. And he's the fourth leading tackler on the team. Second down and four. Same play. This time, Tennessee figured it out pretty quickly, didn't it? Dane Bonham. I told you he was from Fairbanks, Alaska. He transferred to Tennessee from the Air Force Academy. So that's how he got down here. 92, the middle and the right part of your screen just slips around the block. Of Stevenson, 69. That's a cute little play where they bring Palmer back in behind. You remember the first time he did that, Palmer, they tossed him the ball and he ran uh, for a big game. Then they tossed it to him in a reverse. Now they're using him as a decoy, but Bottom was, uh, said, none of that. I know what's going on. So with that play, it becomes third down and 12, and suddenly this huge crowd of partisans get into the act. And there's some confusion defensively on Tennessee's part. And finally, you've heard all these stories about Bear and his boys and how many times uh, Bear whooped his boys when they went off to head coaching careers. Well, there was one of them that he didn't whoop. That one right there. Out at uh, Texas A&M, he beat the Bear. They didn't play too often. Though. They didn't play too often. <laughs> Here we go. Third down and 12. Parker's got a lot of daylight in front of him. He's got to get his first down and then some. So the Tennessee defense fell completely away, leaving the entire boundary side open 
for the Alabama quarterback, and he took off. Well, what happened, Keith, the Tennessee defense, the defensive backs were locked up in man-to-man -man coverage, running with receivers all over the field. Nobody was assigned to the quarterback, and if a quarterback can run and scramble, nobody is left to guard him once he gets through the uh, front four, and uh, he made a big, big play. Prince Wembley was shaken up on the play. He was over there trying to effect the block and in the process got clobbered on the sidelines and got banged up some. This is what's happening in the Southeastern Conference today. Florida, a big winner over Auburn. And Georgia, it was 20-20 at halftime with Vandy, but they win it. And here we go with the Lassick carrying for Alabama. And from the 25, he'll get down to about the 18 or so. That run by Barker, the Bama quarterback, was the seventh tied run for more than 10 yards in this ball game. So they are they're, they're picking up a lot of real estate on the ground. Ten minutes to go in the first half. Tennessee came into this game, as we mentioned early, uh, one, of, one of the best defenses in the SEC. From the 18, up the middle, fullback Martin Houston, the senior from center. And he's going to have the first down. We get word that uh, Reggie Ingram, the inside linebacker who came off the field for Tennessee a little earlier, just had a pinched nerve, shoulder nerve, and uh, they don't know if he'll be back or not. They look like he's working on his lower leg. Oh, working on his shoulder pad. Yeah, shoulder pad. It's first down. This is Lassick. The hole over the left side. Good quick feet. Skater keeps his feet low to the ground, and he makes those cuts very quickly. Here's we look at Alabama inside the 20, including today. <laughs> scored 23 of 27 times defensively for Tennessee. Their opponents have scored 8 of 11 times inside the 20. The is today. back now, number 32, after being being a bit on the sidelines on second down here goes Lassick and he's brought down at the five by Tracy Smith it looked like he was going to get loose and into the end zone but the senior from Jonesboro Georgia wouldn't let him go Lassick now with eight minutes and 46 seconds to play in the first half has over 100 yards 21 carries on 104 yards that's exactly the amount of yardage on the ground that Tennessee is normally used to giving up in one game. Martin Houston, the fullback, doing a great job blocking for Lassick. It will be the third straight game in which he has run for 100 or more yards. Here he goes again. He scored the Alabama touchdown back in the first quarter, and he takes that one down to about the one. And it will be a first and goal for the Crimson Tide. They started out very slowly in scoring points. They struggled. They got 13 here and uh, 17 there. And then the last couple of weeks, they started to put some points on the board. And today, the running game against Tennessee, at least, looks particularly impressive. Classic touchdown. Uh, tickets for this ball game officially. It looks to me like there's more than 8,800 folks wearing red in this crowd of 95,000. Red and orange are kind of similar, but uh, there's no doubt that uh, Gene Stallings has got this group running. That touchdown was a little bit too easy. You expect a little bit more resistance from your defense down inside the two yard line. At eight minutes to go in the first half, Proctor for the point is good. And it's 17 to nothing, Alabama, the number four team in the country. There are the numbers involving the scoring drive by Alabama. Big play was Barker, the quarterback, that 33-yard run on third down. Tide has now run for 201 yards on 33 plays so far in the game. Zippo on passing. Proctor kicks off. Davis is deep. Eight yard line. Nope. He's 
All right, Heath Schuler brings him up for the first down at the 35 after the penalty. A little bit of a delay. Schuler goes out and suits coming. It's deflected and caught by Faulkner. Faulkner caught it off the ricochet. It is short, however, of the first down. Winds up about a five-yard pickup. Let's go back, Keith, and take a look at the touchdown. Here's a man right here who's going to carry the ball right in here, but look at the lack of resistance. The middle linebacker, there's a true freshman. We told you that the uh, Ingram was injured, went out of the ball game. Look at the lack of resistance from Tennessee. The freshman inside linebacker gets turned around, doesn't know where he is, and Alabama knew exactly who to go after. Look at number 80. The shooter, strong as he is, is able to get the ball away. But by the time Schuler took one step away from the snap, Eric Curry was on his back. And he came from the other side. <laughs> Alabama's defense allows a little less than 48 uh, rush, uh, yards per ball game on the ground. And uh, Tennessee's already got more than that. But when you look up at the scoreboard, you realize it's 17 to nothing. The seven minutes to play in the first half, you can be reasonably forgiving that the defense has been a little permissive here and there. Schuler back. Ducks away from the pressure. Flips the ball ahead. Fast will work. He was apparently not over the line of scrimmage. He was pretty close to it, but he was behind it. And Ronald Davis accepts the little toss and will go for the Tennessee first down. Heath Schuler came in. A uh, very highly regarded quarterback. This is only his second year. He drops the ball, got a little pressure, presence of mind to flip it ahead. Didn't have time to throw it, just flipped it. Doesn't matter how you do it, just that you get it done. Very good play by the young quarterback. He's Davis. going to be an outstanding player, Keith. Davis almost dropped it, too. First down at the Alabama 45. Tennessee hasn't been there very much today, but this is Garner. First down. And the same play, Keith. The same play he ran the big yard, big one on before. They do it again. They're going to pull both of these linemen over here, and the receiver, I mean, the running back, will get to the right side this time before they ran it the other way. He's pretty nifty, isn't he? At stole 59, Garner just follows his uh, left tackle. And one play has done very well for him. Six carries for Garner. He's now got 73 yards. This ball is flipped outside to Garner again. And Garner trying to get around the corner, and Alabama will have none of it. George Teague was the man that finally put him into the boundary out of bounds, and there's a penalty flag. Holding Tennessee. Keith Schuler got a pretty good lick that time after the ball left from Antonio London, the outside linebacker, number 55. Offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul to be first down. Guard is pulling. Now watch this right here. He's blocking on the end. That's Curry. Just tackles him. And looked like Smith, the right guard, was pulling. Since that holding call comes from the spot of the foul, it uh, moves it back 13 yards, and it is first down and 23. James Stewart and Aaron Hayden at the backfield. Schuler back, pressure coming, gets his pass away, pass thrown to Stewart. Stewart, who's a pretty tough guy himself from Morristown, Tennessee, is finally on the third lick, knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Tennessee will rotate three running backs, three tailbacks, and Stewart is the best receiver of those three. Garner has the most speed and quickness. They'll also use Aaron Hayden. The popping sounds that you hear up here. Look at that. Your alma mater's Boilermakers are back. Got to get one against the surprise team of the Big Ten, Wisconsin. Second down and 16. Shooter rolls it out. The tackle is made by number 11, Lemansky Hall from Valley, Alabama. What a great play, too, by Lemansky Hall. That was a design quarterback rollout. He had some offensive linemen out in front of him. If there's a surprise on this Alabama defense, it's Lemansky Hall right there. Second on the team in tackles and just doing an outstanding job. 
Buck running at 5.15 to go in the first half. 17 to nothing, Alabama leads. Tennessee with the ball at the tied 34. It is third down and 14. No backs. Underneath. Not enough. Wayne Freeman, number 81, from Hagerstown, Maryland, came across the middle looking for some help. But there wasn't enough. London is number 55. His first name is Antonio, sir. <laughs> so on fourth down, the kicking team is in with John Bexford. He had his first miss of the season from 42 yards back in the first quarter. This is 44 yards. to go on the half. Tennessee's on the board. 17 to 3, Alabama. The Tennessee march to the points. Those are the first points in the first half this season against Alabama. Prior to that field goal, Alabama had outscored the opposition 118 to nothing in the first half. So Smokey's all puffed up about that, and here we go with the kickoff. David Palmer waits to take it. to the 32 where it'll be first down Alabama tomorrow night on ABC life goes on starts things then country music superstar Billy Ray Cyrus will be the guest on America's funniest home videos followed by America's funniest people and Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan will star in the Sunday night movie when Harry met Sally all tomorrow night on ABC from the 32 Sherman Williams and Tarrant Lynch in the backfield, and this is Williams. And he's having all kinds of grief. And after several lumps and bumps, he's back to the line of scrimmage. Tennessee just having a bad time of tackling. Uh, these Alabama receivers and running backs are just giving them a little step one way or the other. 3.53 to go in the first half. Reggie Ingram is back. Oh, they got some changes made in his pads. They rubbed out some of the pinch nerve, and Reggie's back in the ball game. Second down and ten. Williams. Well, I thought number 90, Ben Talley, was just going to wipe him out. Ben put his hat on him and everything else, and he really didn't get him. And he was able to get it back to just about uh, maybe a yard pickup. Well, that time, at least they were aggressive and across the yep. line of scrimmage. They were making things happen on the Alabama side of the line of scrimmage. Arizona tripled UCLA's team, and they played over two sides. So Gave Miami fits. They're tough. This is Parker running around and finally runs out of time as he crosses the 35. And the referee, the referee, Bill Goss, decided he'd flag. It was a kind of a late hit on the quarterback, and I think that's what got the yellow flag out of Bill's pocket. There was a man standing right there, and he didn't pull a flag. So here I think intent becomes involved and uh, they're going to call the personal foul. And that's a big call right there. Watch 41. Ingram to the right of your screen, the middle linebacker. He drops back in coverage, first of all, and then he's going to go over and make the tackle. Now watch to the top of your screen. Right there is the oh, yeah. late hit. Yep. He was knocked that way, though, by an Alabama guy, but the thing that got him in trouble was he stuck that elbow into it. Well, he was coming off the block. You're yep. right. But the, the point is, that's like a turnover because they had stopped them. Now they give them a, a new life with a first down. And it's on the Tennessee side of the field, too, at the 49-yard line with two minutes and 42 seconds to go, and Lassick is back in there. Has the ball for the tie. 
getting blocking on the corner. Palmer had a pretty good block out there himself. And he's going to wind up with about seven or eight yards on the carry. Classic came into this game the fourth leading receiver. I mean, the fourth leading rusher. If you take a look at David Palmer, he was an outstanding player. In fact, he was the Alabama player of the year just two years ago. He was a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, punt returner. As a senior, he rushed for over 2,000 yards and 26 touchdowns. And he also played quarterback, threw for another 1,200 and another 16 touchdowns. He can do it all. Second down, call it three. I think Tennessee probably got caught in the neutral zone. Paul Yetkowski. Look at that. Iowa State jumping all over Kansas. Jimmy Walden will be happy with that, won't he? Good ball foul. Defense was offside. Five yard penalty. Yep. A young man from Winnipeg, Canada got caught in the neutral zone trying to anticipate. Johnny Majors is saying, son, how can you jump offside? You're the closest to the ball. <laughs> you can see it and hear it. That's the problem. Sometimes when you're so close, the inflection can affect those guys so close. Parker's pass is complete. And that's the first one he's had today. Joey Harville is uh, being helped away. There's another penalty flag coming here. That was Parker's first completion of the day. This game normally uh, gets a few flags uh, before it's done because it's so emotionally charged. It just has to be. Holding offense. So Alabama will give up that first pass completion by Barker to the holding call. And coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders will have scores and highlights from around the country. Barry Ann Grabovoy has a report on the second Russian football team to come to the country. The Moscow Bears were over here a couple of weeks ago, played Central Florida. And the Russian Czars are down in Western Kentucky. Monty Clark has some wonderful stories <laughs> yeah, about we having have. coached the Mints Buffalo. Uh-huh. That's a 17-yard penalty against Alabama, coming back to their own 46-yard line. Little quick pop to Palmer. Palmer gets a hold block and uh, picks up Palmer. some, not a whole lot, back down to about the Tennessee 44. And the clock is running now at a minute and 35 to go. Palmer is just so quick. Uh, Keith, in talking with Mal Moore, the offensive uh, coach for the Alabama Crimson Tide. He says we'd like to get the ball in his hands 10 to 12, 15 times a game if we could, either as a receiver, running a reverse, there's a look at Mal, or on kick returns, either kickoffs or punt returns. He is outstanding when he gets the ball in his hands. Both teams with two timeouts. Chris Anderson in the backfield for Alabama. Parker pumps it, now drops it, and has to cover it. Alabama will keep it at the Tennessee 40. They've got to go to the 30, 27, almost the 27 to get the first down. And Alabama spends a timeout. They have one remaining leading 17 to three with 56 seconds to go in the first half. Fifty-six seconds left to play in the half. Our crowd, 97,388. They're hollering for the defensive. Folks wearing the arms and white. Third down. Parker dumps it off to Chris Anderson. Anderson is taken down at the 37 of Tennessee. Now you're looking at fourth down. Are they going to send Mr. Proctor? He kicked a 60-yard field goal in high school. Keith, we get word that uh, Harville, the offensive lineman we saw going off, has a ankle problem. We don't know whether he'll be back in the second half or not. I don't think they're going to try anything fancy. They're going to let the clock tick on down. And they're going to run, uh, run the ball on fourth down. And, uh, unless 
Memphis, Tennessee spends the time out to kill the clock, and Tennessee doesn't seem inclined to do so. Alabama. Now, as time expires, in comes the punter. Well, I, I think that right there, Keith, uh, again, points out the conservative nature of uh, Gene Stallings, and he doesn't run from it. He's not embarrassed by it. That's just the way he is. And uh, he's won a lot of ball games. In fact, he's won 16 straight, the third longest winning streak in the country. Well, when you've got that kind of a record, the way things are going right now for the Crimson Tide, he doesn't even have to have an unlisted phone number. <laughs> well said. The ball goes out of bounds with one second remaining in the first half. Are you saying he might need it somewhere down the road over there? Well, that's possible. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I think if it comes to that point, he'll just hitch up his britches and put on a new pair of boots and head for the ranch. He's on the downside of the mountain anyway, isn't he? Well, he's, he's fixed. The things he does in his judgment are done uh, what he considers right and fair. Well, that's the way it is. And he's playing his strength. He's got the best defense in the country, and uh, you're not going to take any chances by getting a field goal block. So the crowd hoots a bit as they run the clock out, and at halftime, it's Alabama 17 and Tennessee 3. CFA College Football is ABC Sports Exclusive. Brought to you by American Honda, who has been making quality cars. Our halftime score in the old classic, Alabama 17, Tennessee 3. Here we go with the second half of play. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, close friend of the Hatfields, and Jack Aroot. <laughs> ready to go as Alabama will kick off. And uh, Ronald Davis... Waits to return it for Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee's got a long, hard road in front of them. They trail 17 to 3, having lost by a point to Arkansas last week on the last second field goal. And Davis is coming out of the end zone. They huddle back in on the five yard line, trying to hide the ball and create some confusion. And all it got him was stuff at the 10 yard line. Where did that play come? Johnny Major's uh, playbook or why? This is the first half statistics, total plays, almost two to one in favor of Alabama. First downs, only three for Tennessee. Then you go on down, uh, the Alabama rushing 214, only 15 yards passing for Alabama in the time of possession. Two to one in favor of Alabama. No turnovers so far in the first half. And the Volunteers start this offensive possession with very poor field position. Schuler keeps it, lets it fly down the field, and uh, there's a push by the would-be receiver on the defender. Corey Fleming gave uh, George Teague a pretty good push and got away with it, but he still couldn't make the catch. Because Teague had him sealed away, would let him come back in toward the ball. Top right of your screen, take a look at the push right there in the back. Two plays so far in the second half. One was a kind of a Gimme over the second half of play. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, close friend of the Hatfields, and Jack Aroot. <laughs> ready to go as Alabama will kick off. And uh, Ronald Davis waits to return it for Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee's got a long, hard road in front of them. They trail 17 to 3, having lost by a point to Arkansas last week on the last second field goal. And Davis. He is coming out of the end zone. They huddle back in on the five-yard line, trying to hide the ball and create some confusion. And all it got him was stuff at the 10-yard line. Where did that play come? Johnny Major's uh, playbook or why? This is the first half statistics. Total plays, almost two to one in favor of Alabama. First downs, only three for Tennessee. Then you go on down uh, the... Alabama rushing 214, only 15 yards passing for Alabama in the time of possession. Two to one in favor of Alabama. No turnovers so far in the first half. And the Volunteers start this offensive possession with very poor field position. Schuler keeps it, lets it fly down the field, and uh, there's a push by the would-be receiver on the defender. Corey Fleming gave uh, George Teague a pretty good push and got away with it, but he still couldn't make the catch. Because Teague had him sealed away, would let him come back in toward the ball. 
top right of your screen. Take a look at the push right there in the back. Two plays so far in the second half. One was a kind of a gimmick on the kickoff return and the first play from scrimmage a long pass. And it's second down and 10. Bueller back, pressure coming, dumps it off in a hurry. Ball is thrown to uh, Charlie Garner, the uh, tailback. And Garner will get a couple of yards of that ball. And once again, it's Eric Curry coming. Curry came into the game today with 19 career sacks. He's a roommate of uh, John Copeland, the other defensive end who is causing all the problems for Tennessee and Shuler today. Volunteers one out of five on third down conversions today. They run it. This is Garner dancing around, and he's just short of his first down. He's a yard short of the first down, and we check in with Jack Aruba. Keith, not surprisingly, Johnny Majors, all he wanted to talk about was the Alabama defense in the locker room. He said, we've got to keep it better. We've got to get more yardage on our first down. Conversely, he said, we also have to play better defense against them. We've got to shut their running game down. What I found interesting came out of the Alabama sidelines in the locker room. Gene Stallings addressed his team, and he said, gentlemen, we've got 30 minutes to play, but a lifetime to remember it. It's Alabama, Tennessee. One of those moments in your four-year career that you savor. They will not go on fourth and a yard. Probably in light of the Alabama defense today would be foolish, so they will punt it out of there. Joey Chapman, David Palmer waits. Pretty good kick, but it's into the sidelines, deep into the sidelines, and so as a result, not that good as far as yardage is concerned because they mark it out of bounds on the Tennessee 47. Only 28 yards. The ball was high and it was long, but the angle was bad. Well, I don't understand why a left footer would kick to the left sideline because if you shank it, it's really going to go out wide. I understand then kicking away from Palmer, but you would think if you're left footed, you'd kick crossways and try to kick it out on the right side. Alabama opens with uh, Parker at quarterback, as you'd expect, and Lassick behind him, and Alabama comes out throwing across the field to David Palmer, and he is caught from behind and dragged down by Ben Talley, who has played a very good ball game for Tennessee at the outside linebacker position. The Palmer, Keith, is just dangerous as Barker completes his uh, second pass. It's his third pass of the day. Palmer... Uh, Anytime he gets his hands on the ball, is a threat to go the whole way. Last year as a true freshman, he had seven touchdowns, three receiving, and three by punt returns, one punt, one by uh, rushing. This is Lassick running the ball up the middle and running it down near the 20-yard line. And that'll leave him a four and a half yards or so short of their first down. 58 is Todd Kelly, 20 and a half quarterback sacks for Kelly during his career. And as we told you early in the ball game, only Reggie White during his time here had more career sacks. That's pretty fast company for Mr. Kelly. This is Marlon Houston, Martin Houston. And Martin trying for the first down appears to have it. Miami getting a little bit of a breather today playing TCU and Michigan is at Indiana at halftime leading 31 to 3. I want to tell you something folks at Michigan bunch ain't bad. That could be the best team in the country. Well right but they'll never get over the hump until they beat the Pac-10 team out in the Rose Bowl. Keith. That's right. No question. I mean uh, you say that and they they very well might be one of the best teams as you see the first down, they may be the best, but until they go to the Rose Bowl and win that ball game, everybody is going to say, uh-huh, we'll just wait and see. Well, they had the Notre Dame game in hand and frittered it away into a tie. So it's first down for Alabama, just short of the Tennessee 15-yard line. Big upset right there, the SEC, South Carolina. Boycotting, virtual mutiny. That's a pretty good tackle by guess who? J.J. McCluskey. 
He just joined us. We talked about McCleskey earlier in the game. He's only 5'8 and about 170. He's played offense and defense at various times throughout his career. And when you need a spark and you need somebody to come over and give your team a lift, they wanted this young man on defense. He's only 5'8 and he is the strong safety. He has to make a lot of tackles. I don't understand why they wouldn't come out, though, with a 6'6 tight end, why you wouldn't come out and throw the ball to him every other play. For the 5'8 defender. Palmer's back in the lineup. Parker rolls it out, throws the ball out of bounds. He had his tailback, Lassick, wide open over there, but the pressure was coming. Lassick was looking up into the sun, and it just didn't work. Tennessee was blitzing. Lassick was wide open, and Barker just threw it out, threw it away. The ball rests back at the 19-yard line with 11:17 to go in the third quarter, and Alabama leading 17-3. Looking right here at third down and 13. Let's see what uh, they call here. Barker's going to want a timeout. Wants to make sure they're close enough to score, and he wants to put something on the board. Back in the days when a mere 70,000 came to Neyland Stadium, he had that kind of a view up the Tennessee River looking into the Smokies. And then they made the house bigger and bigger. <laughs> now you've got nearly 100,000 in here, and you can't see anything but folks. And it's third down. Parker back. Pressure coming. Great play. Great defensive play by 58, Todd Kelly and James Wilson, 72. 58, making his first sack of the day, came in with nine, leading the team. And the two defensive ends meet in the backfield with the quarterback in between them. It looks like Wilson was shaken up a little bit. Michael Proctor is in for a 45-yard field goal try after the sack. Low line drive, hook to the left, no. So Tennessee gets a huge emotional lift out of stopping Alabama when they were inside the 20. So it's 17-3 and the Volunteers take over out on their 27-yard line. Second down and 13. Schuler's little cut pass is complete to number 19, Moe Phillips, who had stepped up into a slot back position. And that is short of the first down. You look at Schuler. This is a look uh, at what he is playing against today. Alabama in the nation. They're first in total defense, first against the run, and first in scoring defense, and second in pass defense. They give up an average of six points per game. Third down and five. trying to run through a Joshua tree. Well, they just pushed the entire offensive line back in his face. That time, Copeland just pushed Smith, the right guard, right on back. Putting time. Tom Hutton, 43. Palmer. Look at those feet. 31-yard line. 43-yard punt, four-yard return. Eight and a half minutes to go, third quarter. 17 to three, Alabama lead. The volunteer statue, dedicated 1967, located in a circle park about a block from the stadium. So from the 31 comes Alabama now with Chris Anderson, the running back. He's got the ball. And he's got a first down. Picked up 11 yards on the carry. 
He runs a bit upright, more so than does Lassick, but he's very quick. It's just straight blocking up front. Uh, Shield 61 is a center. He gets his man. Wilson to the left of your screen is holding the middle linebacker with his left arm right there. <laughs> That was pretty good blocking until I saw that hold. <laughs> Firm grip. 44. First down. Anderson goes the other way and gets just over the 45. Call it two. Second down eight coming up. That's at halftime now, Miami. Last year, Keith, as you recall, Tennessee went to a four-man line and four linebackers and took out a defensive back to try to stop the run of Alabama. And here's a look at the comparison of Alabama and Tennessee rushing today. Alabama has rushed 40 times for 226 yards, and that average of 5'7". Tennessee has rushed only 15 times for 74 yards. Of course, there was one play for 42 yards in there by Tennessee that really kicks that average up. Here comes Palmer. Keeps it. Takes it to Kevin Lee and kept it and turned it to midfield. He has some famous cousins, the Pointer Sisters. <laughs> At midfield, third down and three. Parker can run for it. And he does down to the Tennessee 45. He almost waited too long. But he got just enough. And so they'll move the chains one more time. Well, the offensive line for Stallings in Alabama are just doing an outstanding job. He had all kinds of time to throw. Then when he decided to pull it down and run for the first down, he uh, had the ability to get upfield and do it. This team, uh, Tennessee, came in uh, second in the league in the sacks, quarterback sacks. One today. That's Anderson. Well, he's got another first down. Moves the chains as Alabama's ground game was Again, it's running on all wheels. Watch, watch the offensive line. All five starters from last year return. 69, the right guard is Stevenson. 77 out there, the right tackle is Patterson. The tight end, 83, is Buskey. And not until he gets six or seven yards into the secondary does he run into a defender. Might have picked off that backer gesture in there, too, and opened the daylight for it. This is Houston. Martin Houston, the fullback, and that's another. Alabama first down. It's a kind of running game that not only marches the chains down the field, but gobbles up the clock. As I mentioned earlier, Tennessee lost 10 defensive starters from last year's team. I'm a little bit surprised that Tennessee doesn't go to a five-man defensive line or to that four-man, four-linebacker, three-defensive back look to stop the run, to stop the Alabama run at any cost and force him to throw the football. Ball resting just at the 24-yard line now for the first down. And Lassick checks back into the lineup. Up man, Houston. Well, he did a lot of that on his back, most of that on his own. As the Tennessee man hit him, knocked him off balance, but he picked up five yards, falling down. And it's another first down. And that's a little misdirection where he's going to fake the toss to the wide guy and all of the linebackers are going to run out there. They're going to be blocked that way. And Houston takes the ball and comes back the other direction. It's almost, uh, it's almost uh, right that the fullback, after doing so much blocking, gets to carry the ball a few times. On first down from the 11, it's Tarrant Lynch, number 45, a sophomore out of Town Creek, Alabama. That'll pick up a couple of yards on the play. Maybe not quite there. Yeah, I'm at the nine-yard line where they put it down. That Arizona bunch is making some noise out on the West Coast today, too. The Arizona Wildcats have lost by a point in Miami. Beat up UCLA. Now they're handling Stanford in the third quarter. Pitch it back to last. I tell you what, when he gets turned back up field, he lays a lick on you for a 190 pounder. He moved the stack a yard after he hit him. 
And the ball is resting right about the five. There's a score. Maybe a 45-yard touchdown run on the third quarter. Number eight, Stanford's got a problem with that Arizona defense, the way they've been playing. Arizona plays Washington November 7th. Third down and four. Fullback, Houston, trying to cut it back the other way. Also at the same time trying to wrap both arms firmly around the ball. And you lose a little bit of your agility when you have to do that. It's fourth down and about two, and, uh, and the players want to go. And they're going to let him. Well, I think they should, Keith, because even if you don't make it and turn the ball over, you've got the best defense in the country, a defense that hasn't allowed Tennessee to do anything today coming on the field. Lassick is back in there as the deep back bombers in the game. Pitch it to Lassick. Hit Hit by number nine, Steve Seffen. So it's a great play by Session, and he stops the tie. It's going to be a toss over here, and Session is over here on a corner blitz. You've got to have a, a defensive man in the backfield. You've got to have a strong, I mean, have the flanker up there on the corner to block him. Have a little wing with penetration by the defense will do that every time. Doesn't have rosy field position, but their spirits have been uplifted considerably. This is the second time that they've been able to turn away Alabama in the third quarter when the tide was down, knocking on the door. So it's first down volunteers from the five, right up the middle, and they get almost five on the carry by James Stewart. Let's find out something about Michigan. Thank you. Second down and five. Schuler handing away to Stewart again. I have a question. If, uh, if Derek Alexander had been healthy last year at the University of Michigan, I wonder if Desmond Howard would have won the Heisman Trophy. Well, he and Desmond Howard went to Michigan at the same time, both highly regarded wide receivers, and I would say that was probably wouldn't have happened he wouldn't have won the Heisman because it would have yeah. spread it around you That's know how right. uh, it would have been spread around it would have spread them around Alexander's a little bigger target actually third down and three for the volunteers they need something good to happen for them they're in trouble the pass good caught by Faulkner Schuler drilled him Faulkner took the punishment and held on to the ball first down for the volunteers up around the 28th you're having trouble with your quarterback's protection. Get him outside the pocket. The receiver here is going to go down and break to the inside. Plan was keep him on the move. He likes to roll out. Get him away from the, uh, the rush. Great hit there by the safety. And a first down. Not too many third down first downs for Tennessee against Alabama here today. That pass is almost intercepted. Chris Donnelly almost came away with that one because Schuler never got his shoulder squared away up the field. He was outside the pocket again. Again, that's what they want to do. Take a look at Alabama defensively today. There's been no turnovers in the game. One sack. Third down conversions for Tennessee. Only two of eight. And three plays and out on drives. They've had eight drives and three, uh, six of the eight times They've had the ball three plays and out. Second and ten. Run it. With Stewart. It'll be third down and seven. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll choose a Chevrolet most valuable player from each team. And for the 22nd year, through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Pretty hard for a right-handed quarterback running left to throw that ball upfield with uh, defendable accuracy unless he can square himself up. Exactly. you got to get deep and then come to the line of scrimmage, but Alabama's getting some penetration even on the rollout. Joe Blitz. 
Goes down hard. The pass is away. And the pass is incomplete. Intended for Corey Fleming. And Derek Oden just unloaded on him. He didn't drive him into the ground because that would have been a foul. And he had a man wide open, too. He's going to blitz. The receiver here is going to come down and break to the inside. Look at, Take a look at how wide open he is. This is a chance that Tennessee has had the right play called on in several instances, and the timing has just not been right. Alabama too quick and fast. That disrupts your timing. Hutton, the punt. Gets this one off down the middle. Palmer looking to run this one. a little bit back to about the 35 eight yard return off a 41 yard putt and 57 seconds to play in the third quarter there was a major upset today in the SEC South Carolina rebounding mightily to beat Mississippi State 21 to 6 Ole Miss and Arkansas and Kentucky LSU play tonight of course it was Arkansas that had the big upset last week here in this stadium the one back for Alabama now. Number 35. Blocks the ball. Picks it up. And is finally brought down after 30. <laughs> the entire stadium came up for a minute because they were scared to death he was going to take off and make something big happen. Ball was handed to him a little bit high. He's going to turn around and run. There's going to be a great block here by one of the offensive linemen of Alabama Goes coming back. Patterson. Right there to the right of your screen. And McCluskey, the smallest man on the field, again makes the tackle. Derek Lessing, again, is the deep back. Has the ball on the screen. And runs it up across the 35 to near the 37. And time has expired in quarter number three. So after three, 17 to three, Alabama will be back for the final quarter after this message and a word from our ABC station. That commercial brought to you by mom and dad. Well said. 38-yard line, third down, and six. Anderson, and nothing doing this time. There was good penetration by the middleman, James Wilson, number 72. And Big James got him. So the Tide will have to kick it away. Davis waits. Up Davis. Got a reverse going. Got a wall set up. Look out. Punter. Sylvan. Nilo Sylvan. Wide receiver, freshman. Turns in a big play coming off the river. The ball was taken by number 83. A different man had gone back to field it. Tennessee pulled the gimmick on the kickoff coming out of the second half. He just barely gets that ball before he's tackled. There'll be some good blocks along here. Right there, that's McCluskey, number six, with a big block. They try to get something going, try to cash it in. The pass is too long from Schuler into the end zone intended for Craig Faulkner. So they were trying to strike quick, and it didn't work. And here's John Saunders. Second and ten. Schuler's pass down the middle of Bullock. Complete to Fleming. First down, Tennessee. Alabama, 25-yard line. Just starting the fourth quarter. 17 to 3, Alabama leading. Play action pass. Get the quarterback out of the pocket. You can't sit in there against Alabama. They've had plays open all day. 
Lakers. They just haven't had the timing. This time, the timing was there, and the completion now, they're on the 25-yard line after that big punt return gave some life to the fans. Hayden is in at tailback, or single back. No way. Nothing. No way. You can't Nothing. run on first down when they're expecting it. After three quarters, heavily in favor. Look at the bottom, the time of possession. Then we go back up to the top. Total plays, 59 to 33, and only 152 yards. Total offense and four first downs for Tennessee through the first three quarters. Spread them out, no backs. Davis in at a wide out. Completed to Fleming. Race to the corner, out of bounds. Three-yard line. Alabama man shaken up on the sideline. Chris Donnelly. This is almost a naked screen. The, the, the Curry, number 80, has a free shot because all of these players in the orange shirts are out here leaving the protection of uh, the quarterback to get out here and block to set up the uh, run by Fleming. First and goal, Tennessee. Stewart and Brunson line up in the backfield. Schuler's pass. Touchdown. David Horn. So Tennessee gets field position off the reverse on the punt, and they catch it in. Good call. All three backs go this way. The quarterback outside the pocket. Tied in over here is going to slip into the back of the end zone. It's a good call because first down is the best down to throw the ball on play action. Schuler Rose, his mobility and arm strength, gets the ball into the end zone. Horn came down with just enough to make it count. The kick is good by Beckport. And with 12 minutes and 53 seconds to play, we still have a contest. 17 to 10, Alabama. Let's go back to the end of that uh, last touchdown. Schuler outside the pocket, gets his momentum going toward the line of scrimmage, shoulder square, outstanding catch. Did you think he was out? Both feet in. Of course, here's the kick. Not a whole lot on it. They didn't want uh, Palmer to get his hands on the ball, but now Alabama can have its choice. They can take it up on the 35 if they want it, and they probably will. He didn't want to kick that ball down to Palmer. Instead, he went out of bounds. So they'll take it at the 35. And David Horn's third catch of the year is good for a touchdown. So kick out of bounds to put the ball on the 35. And with a lot of time left, it's only a seven-point difference now. As you look at the drive, and the reason they only had to go 42 yards is because of the punt return that set up that touchdown. Lassick in the first half had 115 yards. In the second half, he's had only four. Anderson's been playing quite a bit. Marcus pass, good to Palmer. And gets it up to the 45 and appears to have a first down before McCluskey brings him down. Here's Jack. Well, Keith, I'm with a man who has a lot of mixed emotions. His son, J.J. Serlis, plays for the Tennessee Volunteers. But Tom Serlis, you are an All-American linebacker for Bear Bryant at Alabama. Who do you pull for in this contest? Well, it's really a heart twister. It's uh, hard to pick a team. Of course, the son, you know, I've got to root for him. But uh, I've got Bear Bryant's ring on, and that's always going to be there. Well, Keith, they bleed crimson a lot of times down here. Marker nailed behind the line of scrimmage. The defensive play is made by the son of the man uh, Jack was talking to, J.J. Sherlock. Talk about good timing right here. 
Surlis is number 48. Plays off the block. Surlis has had some bad knees. In fact, they call him Iceman because he spends so much time with ice on his knees. Arthritis. He has arthritis. Second down, 11. Barker's pass too high and then gets the Palmer. Well into the crowd. And so now the Tennessee trucker, trailing by only seven, starts to unravel the Alabama offense a little bit. This is a loud stadium, but Alabama has always done well up here. In fact, they've won eight of the last ten times they've come to Neyland Stadium. echoing through the foothills of the Smokies as Summers drifts around behind the 10-yard line to make the catch and comes back to about the 18. It's a 52-yard punt for Brian Deal. Well, he has uh, really been outstanding Meantime, today. There's a penalty flag back up near midfield. So let's wait a minute and see what's going on. Well, but, but Alabama doesn't want to kick it again. Deal has been outstanding. I wouldn't think they'd want to kick it again. If it's a five-yard penalty. There's no first down involved. Even if it's a ten-yard penalty, certain kind, there would be no first down involved. Holding by the receiving team. Post premise kick foul. From the end of the kick, which is a nine, will go to four and a half. Half the distance, first down. So it's against the volunteers, and it puts them back, back, back to the four and the half. Here's the total yards for today. Alabama, 263 yards rushing, only 54 yards passing. And Tennessee is about the same rushing and passing. And that is a lot more than most teams are getting against Alabama this year. Usually, Alabama gives up about 155 a game. And the previous spot, fourth down again. Well, it apparently called it on, on uh, Tennessee, and it should, in fact, have been called on Alabama. Now they will have to kick it again. No little miscommunication. Tennessee, but it was on Alabama. So the players have a little, not, not the only ones have a little trouble <laughs> down on the field communicating and all this noise. 11 13 to play in the game. Let's pause five seconds right here so our ABC stations can identify themselves. This is Channel 8, WFAA-TV, Dallas-Fort Worth. And Deal will kick it, and Summers will try to return it. Summers, Keith, does have a punt return for a touchdown this year. This time, he's going to get the ball a lot different place. That was almost blocked. Almost blocked. Summers will get it back to near midfield. Brought down at the 48-yard line of Alabama, and J.J. McCluskey came within a highlight of blocking that kick. Here's Jack. Keith, we've been measuring the noise all afternoon, and this is the loudest it's been in the Volunteer Stadium all day. It's up over 110 dB. That's louder than rock music that's amplified like going to a rock concert. And they are rapidly approaching the figure of decibel level that makes rivaling jet aircraft. You can't hear yourself down here. 36-yard difference. 
as a result of that hole in the two, the two punts. Yes. Uh -huh. Schuler gets the heat. Pass is deflected. And Schuler is deflated and is laying down flat on the ground. Tennessee quarterback was caught, pinched, and just level. Number 11, the bottom of your screen, a free shot. He saw the man coming from the front side, but he didn't see the man from the back. I think his lights went out, Keith. He got a pretty good wallop. Colquitt is the backup. Jerry talking there on the sidelines, and uh, Schuler's going to have to come out. He's woozy, and Colquitt will go into the ball game. He's another baby with a pretty good arm on him, but uh, Heath Schuler is woozy. Tennessee doing what got him down there the last drive, and that is play action pass on first down. They just didn't have enough to block everybody. He's down at the 45, run down by Derek Odin. Yes, indeed. This is good defense. Well, it's just tough hitting ball game, too, as you... They knocked uh, Schuler out of the ball game as you see him right there. He probably doesn't know where he is right now. He may have a slight concussion. The fact is, it's a tough situation for a backup quarterback to come in, not warmed up, and try to uh, move your ball club against the team that's the best in the defense, best in the nation defensively. Colquitt is looking at third down and 13. Dropped the ball, picks it up, takes off. Sandwich. Michael Rogers was the principal hitter on the play. So Colquitt gets a taste of uh, the Alabama action on the defensive side of the ball. And uh, the Volunteers kicking team will come on. Schuler talking to the doctors and the trainer seems to be all right now. We're so. told that he just got his bell rung and they'll ask him some pertinent questions and know, uh, find out if he knows where he is, knows what the plays are. Comes back to the corner on the bounce. And Hutton just gets it out of there and gets a good kick out of it. All the way down to the Alabama 22, 32 yard punt, no return. Well, if that is getting your bell rung, the next time they pull the rope, if I were him, I'd want the ambulance coming too. Summary of the ball game, you see it's Alabama by seven. The game has not been that close, really. But Tennessee is sitting here with uh, nine minutes and 22 seconds and a chance to win this ball game. They've hung in game length. From the 22, first down Alabama, Barker pitches to Lassick. He's been quiet in the second half, and they're going to run him down at about the line of scrimmage. And again, it's J.J. McCleskey who makes the play. McCleskey is in double figures for tackles. That's his 11th tackle of the day. And he leads the volunteers along with Tally in that category. I don't see how in the world he missed blocking that punt while ago. He came so close to it. <laughs> Second down and still about 10. They say nine, but it's because they picked up a half a yard. Classic this time blows over the left side and barrels for the 42 and a first down. Ball came out, but the whistle had blown. They're double teaming. They have double teamed the nose tackle all day long. And 41, Ingram is just slow, the middle linebacker, getting to the hole. Classic. Shaken up. I think, again, the case of uh, just not being sure where he is. Can't get his legs to work. Sometimes you know where you are, but you still can't get your legs to work when you've taken a lick like that. And he was hit. You see Derek's total call of the day. He'll have to leave the ball game for a little while. Ball is at the 42. It's a first down with Chris Anderson checking in now. At the 
single back position. Little delay, hand the ball off to Houston. And Houston's going to have another Alabama first down. As he takes the ball all the way down to the 45 yards. He's line. got to be hurt, too, Keith. McCluskey just lowered a boom, and he was being held on to by one of the Tennessee volunteers, and McCluskey gets a free shot. <laughs> McCluskey, 5'8", 170 pounds. Right there. That was Smith, number three, that was uh, fighting to hang on, and McCluskey... I tell you what, J.J. is running pretty high on the MVP list right now, the way he's been playing today. Flying all over the place, clock stopped, 8.41 to go in the game. The starting running backs for Alabama <coughs> both been dinged up and are on the sidelines right now. There's Martin Houston, the latest. Derek Lassert preceded him, so it's Chris Anderson and Parent Lynch in the backfield right now. And this is Lynch. And on first down, he picks up close to five. Next Sunday, International Figure Skating Spectacular on ABC Sports. Olympic medalist Nancy Carey, SEC today. That was South Carolina upending the Mississippi State Maroon. And that gives Alabama a little breathing room. They have to go down to Starkville later on in the season. They'll have a, if they win this one, they'll have a two-game edge as you look at Mal Moore wanting a timeout to talk about it. They see him. He didn't have the right people for what they were calling, and so they spend the timeout. Let's consider the circumstances now with uh, 7.22 to play in the game. Alabama has one timeout remaining. It's third down and two. They lead by seven, 17 to 10. They wanted to make sure they got the right people in the right place at the right time. They give the ball to Houston. And Martin Houston will have the first down, and he got it by about a foot. So well, that's a big play in this in this ball game right there. That's the outside linebacker, and that is not the way to play outside linebacker. You do not run around the block. He ran around the block right there. A 45 Lynch. You got to take on that block so you don't open up a huge hole, especially on third down. So they take uh, Lynch out now and put Lassick back in on first down at the Tennessee 35 and give Lassick the ball, and he'll pick up a yard. Tackle by J.J. Surlis out of Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. It's Tennessee defense, uh, Keith. We talked about them a little bit earlier. Uh-oh, Wisconsin came back to beat see the that. I see that. We mentioned that the Tennessee defense lost 10 starters. Six of them were drafted. Four of them were in the, the top three rounds of the NFL draft. They lost uh, Chuck Smith to Chris Mims in the first round. Dale Carter was a first-round selection. So, uh... Johnny Majors lost a lot of talent on that defense, and you just don't plug some new guys in immediately and expect them to play. This is Houston. Nothing doing. George Kidd and J.J. Serlis. You know, Serlis has been pretty quiet until we get down late in the ball game. Now it's crunch time, and now he shows up. To the offensive line. This time, the orange shirts get in the creases, and there's no gaping holes there. Good defense that time. Larry Marmee, the defensive coordinator, doing a nice job. You know who had his head in the middle of that? J.J. <laughs> Third down and ten. Parker, go! Well, if you counted the arms that were up, it would be Tennessee's ball. <laughs> That's right. A whole bunch. 
Third down pass from the opposite side. Who is that, Wilson? 72, knocks the ball loose. That play by Wilson takes him out of field goal range, and now they'll have to punt it. Big play. 17 to 10. High hanging kick. Fair catch is called by Tommy Johnson. He might have been better off to let it take a shot at the end zone. It might have gotten there. Well, with that defense on my side, I think I'd catch it and uh, him up. make him go 85, 80 yards. Yep. Yep. He, he caught it out around the eight yard line. The ball bouncing sideways. They might have had him a little deeper, but they'll take him at the eight. Shuler's back in there. First down from the eight. Kept it. And goes down after about a yard pickup. Michael Rogers out of Laverne, Alabama, makes the tackle. So it'll be second down. And nine. Fifty. Environmental post game report with scores and highlights across the country as time permits. Ball of the ball game. And on second down and nine. Schuler brings him up with a single back. And Aaron Hayden throws it quickly. Foster. Short of the first down. Stopped a yard and a half. Short of the first down. Watch the man out here. He's lined up over the receiver. He's going to blitz, and this is the man here that has to come all the way out to cover the receiver that's going to break out into the flat. This is the skies by uh, Alabama. They send the corner that was over the slot. If this thing would have been timed out a little bit better, that could have been a big play. Third, close to two, Schuler for the first down. So Heath Schuler, the sophomore from Bison City, asserting himself here in the late going. 3.50 to play in the ball game, And it's a first down for Tennessee up at their own 29-yard line. Alabama controlled it, really, until the fourth quarter. Tennessee is... Made it very interesting. Bingo for number 80, 98, James Gregory. It is Gregory, the nose tackle, getting that one. You just don't have a lot of time to make up your mind what you want to do. So many of these defensive linemen for Alabama, Gregory and Curry and Copeland, and now you see Gregory going out because it's a passing situation. They send in two better pass rushers than he is. You don't have a lot of time to make up your mind if you're the quarterback. Second down and 19, 18 after the sack. And Schuler, short drop, starts to go, pressure coming. John Copeland, no chance. And that's four sacks. Washington State to a 30-17 lead over UCLA in the fourth quarter. In a situation like this, Keith, where this ball game is, and your quarterback and you're trying to move, you just cannot afford to take sacks. No negative yardage in this situation. The worst you want are incomplete passes. The last two should have been thrown away. If, if, if you have the presence of mind, you've got to think of that ahead of time. Schuler's just a sophomore. He's thinking of a lot of other things besides that. Third and 23. Roll him out to get him away from the pressure. That's out of bounds. Yep. So it's an incomplete forward pass. Yep. In the meantime, the clock has run all the way down to 203. Too much pressure in the pocket. You got to get your quarterback outside. And then the execution is not there. And fourth down. 23. Tennessee spins one of its three timeouts to talk about it. Tennessee has decided apparently to at least show punt 
whether they do it or not we'll just have to wait and see but I think it's the right thing to do Keith you're back it's fourth and 24 but you should have done it before you called the timeout then you would have had three timeouts to stop the clock when you give it to him Martin hits it good one Palmer tracks it down back on the 38 yard line and then wriggles around for a while and comes back to it and stops the 44. So it's a 46 yard punt and a six yard return. And as you see, Texas A&M continues undefeated. And Alabama has the football with one minute and 49 seconds to play in the ball game, leading 17 to 10. And uh, number 52 of the Volunteers, who is Mark Holland, the snapper. Tennessee has two timeouts left. Look at that. Georgia Tech leading Florida State by 11. But they have upsets. Yep. Houston gang tackled after a two-yard pickup. The Volunteers jump quickly into a six-man front. And uh, call a timeout. They got one left. And you got 143 to play in the ballgame. Well, let's see if we can define things for you now. Next Saturday, here on ABC, Ohio State, Michigan State, the Big Ten country, Penn State, West Virginia, Baylor, Texas A&M in the Southwest. The ACC game is Georgia Tech, North Carolina. And right now, it begins to look like the Pac-10 game will be Washington State and Southern California. Maybe, depending on how things go, but that decision has not been made. There, you know, all of this talk about all of Stanford, which uh, was trailing the Arizona team a goodly bit a while ago in the third quarter. People have paid little attention to Arizona State because of all the problems they've had, and yet they, uh, those Sun Devils have lost this one ball game. How about Arizona? Well, Arizona's still right there, too. Arizona State is the one that nobody's ever said a word about, except uh, in, in times of travail, and yet uh, they're still there. This is Martin Houston. Oh, he lost the ball. Tennessee has a drill. They work on it every day. The first man hits, the second man strips the ball. Tennessee's got it. They got their chance. 133 to play in the ball game. And Tennessee is going to have the football around the 48. The big fullback, first man hit. Now they're in there grabbing for it, right there. That is the first turnover of the ball game. Volunteers have only one timeout remaining. As they come quickly, Schuler back. Pressure. Runs right into Eric Curry. Defense is what got Alabama this far, and defense is what's been the strength of their ball club today. I don't care for how much they've run for. Look at the bottom. Number 80 is Eric Curry. He's not he's just hanging around this time. He's letting London 55 do the rushing. And Jewler, a young quarterback, needs to be able to dump the ball when nothing is there. He cannot take the sack. Tennessee has just spent its last time out. The ball moved from the 48 back inside the 44, and they no longer have a timeout with which to work. 115 to play in this game. Gene Stallings worked with uh, Tom Landry for 14 years at the Dallas Cowboys. He also worked with Bear Bryant. In fact, he was a player for Bear Bryant at Texas A&M, and uh, as he learned organization from Landry, and he learned motivation and preparation from the Bear. So here's Schuler now. He's got his instructions for the last uh, minute and 15. See, Florida State number six is losing. Stanford at number eight is losing, and Penn State number nine has lost.
Tennessee needs to be in a position here, I would think, to try to run a no huddle if they can. And they've got that ability. The thing they just, they, they've got to go back to getting him outside the pocket. Play action and outside the pocket is what they've been doing. There's no threat of play action here, especially with no backs in the backfield. Spread them out. Pass down the middle, deflected, intercepted. Chris Donnelly makes the interception. And that'll do it. Donnelly is a transfer from Vanderbilt. He was the 1989 SEC Freshman of the Year. Was Donnelly decided that he wanted to change the scenery? The roll. Good defensive play by the front man, and Donnelly is there for the interception. Trying to get the ball to Davis, a speed receiver coming across the field. Maybe just waits a little bit long. He, there was a hole there between the linebackers. He waited a tad long. Donnelly with his third interception of the year. Tennessee cannot stop the clock now. They have no timeouts remaining. I'm not sure who that was that deflected it. It might have been uh, Michael Rogers. A, a dropping linebacker who knocked it up in the air for the, the killer for the tie. Alabama came in here having won six in a row. And as you see, they won the last three times here. And listening around town since we've been here, they're on Johnny's case pretty good. Some of the I had a talk show this morning that was brutal. Well, Phil Fulmer filled in for Majors while he had his bypass surgery. 26 days after he had the surgery, he was back. But Fulmer had won three games, including one at Georgia and one at against Florida. <laughs> well, the Alabama kids are enjoying it, and they've earned it. You know, coming in, Keith, I didn't know much about this Alabama team. They're ranked one of the top five or six in the country. As you take a look at Shuler, he'll get better. But the defense for Alabama and their offensive line and their running game has been outstanding. So the tech seconds will tick away. And here are your most valuable players. Uh, Derek Lassick for Alabama, 33 carries, 142 yards, and two touchdowns. J.J. McCluskey, 12 tackles, 5'8", 12 tackles for Tennessee. And Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for academic achievements and to help those who need financial help. Game's over. Alabama, 17, Tennessee, 10. Alabama is now 7-0. We'll have some interviews from Neyland Stadium during the post-game show, but for the moment, the folks from Tuscaloosa are the happiest. They win by seven. This week on ABC's NFL.